or dragon, whatever. And all that started with KO extending and dying. Mistakes are opportunities, you know. How could you betray us like this? Because I could. Because I wanted to. It ain't about the money. <laughs> it ain't all about the money. With my dying breath, I offer my soul to thee. Lady of Vengeance, let justice be done. Flesh accepted. What are you? We are the Spear of Vengeance. We come for you, Deceiver. Not a chance. Innocent blood stains your hands. I'll fight Samuel! Your pockets overflow with the spoils of treachery. Take it! Take it off! Welcome back to the OPL. My name is Michael Hingersing, and if you're just joining us, Sin came out of the gate strong in Game 1, defeating Legacy and ending their win streak. But Legacy have fought back in Game 2 to tie the Series 1 all. I'm joined here at the analyst desk by Nathan Mendrix Mendez, our OPL analyst, and our special guest today, Nick Inero smith Gentlemen, let us get straight into our social media comp. Let us know via the hashtag IamOPL or on Facebook who you think uh, is your favourite uh, OPL player. Uh, there's a photo there you can comment on. There's been a lot of people shouting out uh, former Legacy uh, pro uh, Minky Whale in that. He's retired, so you can't vote for him. Cop that. All right. <laughs> so pick someone who is currently active. <laughs> Mendrix, do you, have a, do you have a fave? Who's your fave? Who's your bae? Who's, Who's my your OPL bay? bay? Who's my OPL bay? Oh, I'm thinking about it. There's just so many good guys at the moment. You really put me on the spot here. But Pick one. Don't be a coward. If I just say it, it'll have to be Carbon because me and him have had a good time. So. Right. <laughs> in, in Aero, no Tainted Minds picks, obviously. Outside of TM, who's your bay? Uh, I mean, it's Swiffer. Swiffer's the best <laughs> so player Swiffer. Else, So, I mean, I have to go with that, to be honest. <laughs> Beautiful eyes. Very charming man. All right, let us get into Game 3 because uh, who's it going to be, right? Is it Legacy? Is it Sin? Who's going to tie up this series? I feel like Legacy have been, uh, they, they, they had the momentum, but they weren't happy with that last win, were they, in Arrow? Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a Sin third game win. Like mm. I said before, like Sin showed that they could almost win that game despite losing pick ban, I think. And Legacy showed that they didn't really know how to end that game despite getting a lead. Uh, Sin still got first blood. Sin were still controlling early until that dragon fight. I think Sin honestly looked better than Legacy today, which is really surprising. But mm. yeah, that's game three for them, in my opinion. Uh, Mendrix, if Sin just continue to ARAM, it, does, do you get the sense that just crazy random, like ARAMs is not a thing Legacy have necessarily practiced against? Well, they're clearly struggling against it. and <laughs> you, I mean, you, you just saw it in that game as it occurred. So what I'd like to see them do is sort of just slow down. They tried to do it in that second game as well, sort of slow down Juves, make sure that he can't get going. And they did a good job of that initially at the start when they said, okay, no worries, we're going to three buff them. We're going to take away the blue. We're going to slow down Juves, make sure he's not going to be as fast as he could be. And it was a great start, but Juve still got the first blood in the very, uh, like, what well, was part of the first blood. So, I mean, he's still performing well. They need to slow him down, and that's going to be their way to sort of stop this ARAM from building up before he gets a chance to get going. Uh, and Nero, as, as a coach, when you come up against a team doing something that's a, a bit rando and you're not really sure, like, mid midway through a series like this, what are you telling your team? Because you you, it's, you haven't practiced against it because you didn't expect it because it's random. So wh what's your advice? Well, I think playing against how Sin does with the ARM thing, the most important thing is, like we said the game before, is to like play comfort and play safe. Mm. Like Teams like that are really open to making big mistakes and throwing big team fights because they're obviously always grouped up and they're open to TP plays. We saw it in the last game that they got TP'd on and they couldn't handle that fight even though it was a slight lead. And I think... That's what Legacy need to talk about is just like play safe, try to set up wards, look for a TP play, punish them for ARAMing like this when they shouldn't be. All right, well, we've already seen Jace as a priority pick uh, for both sides. Outside of that, what kind of picks are we going to see in this third game? Anything anything crazy going to come out or is it just going to be Varus, Jace, you know? 
Uh, I don't think anything too crazy will come out, to be honest. I think both teams uh, are in the same position of wanting to be comfortable after that last game. So I think they're probably just going to sit with similar picks. You're going to see more Jace, more Varus, and that's really it, to be honest. I get, again, with it being a third series, I do expect them to also just continue to play safe. And the reason why they do that is they say, we do not want to sort of play a cheese game. We do not want to have some crazy pick because that's something that you, you kind of want to do in the first or second game when you know you're up. And... At the moment, because it is the end of the series, these guys are going to be playing super safe. I probably expect it to go be a, a long 40-minute game because of that. All right. Well, if you want more in-depth analysis of these games, you can find it on the OPL show, hashtag OPL show. Uh, you can find it on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other places. Good podcasts are found. It's myself, it's Spawn, it's Fish, breaking down the games week to week and also previewing the action about to come uh, the weekend ahead. So make sure you download that. And uh, I think in this week's episode, you can also hear uh, one of us, I won't say who, uh, arguing about pineapple pizza. So, you know, a variety of subjects. All right. <laughs> That is enough from us here at the Analyst Desk. Let us get into Game 3 by throwing our casters, Spawn and Fish. That's right, Hingers, because pineapple is the best topping for pizza. You know, we heard from the desk who their OPL Bay was. I still have to say mine is still going to be you, Hingers, because you are the best host in the OPL that <laughs> we've had in a while. Uh, yeah. He certainly is. There's a reason that I don't do it anymore, mate. There's a reason I'm back over here. I went and found that guy. Don't back away from me. I mean, that's no secret at all that I, uh, you know, I tried my best. That's what I will say. I gave my all to this show as uh, we jump into Pick Bear Face for Game 3. Immediately for Sin against Legacy. Gone all the way. It's the third and final match here. Sin took Game 1 quite convincingly, ag convincingly against Legacy. Legacy looked like they were going to strike back. There was a big back and forth between Sin and Legacy. Sin just looked like they were clawing at the feet of the Legacy every single time, but couldn't make anything happen. They're already banning out a couple of champions here. LeBlanc actually being banned out on the blue side of Summoner's Rift here today. Zyra, the first ban from Sin. Rengar and Camille, as always, being banned out on the red side of the Rift. We'll see whether there is a heavy focus back onto support or jungle, as it has been in game one and two, respectively. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is what Anero hit on, uh, and that is when you play the style that Sin is playing, there's big windows where you make mistakes. And I think it's very fair to say that we saw those mistakes out of Sin. I mean, when Jews went for the bottom lane turret, that was a massive mistake. When Flares went for the huge flanking teleport play, it kind of just fizzled into absolutely nothing, and they ended up fighting a 4v5. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. So. Uh, if Legacy really can just batten down the hatches, you know, they're not in uh, they're, they're not in unfamiliar territory. I mean, Sin's always played this way. Just play safe style League of Legends. Well, Sin have banned out Zyra, and they've got the first pick of Malzar, so priority on the support being picked up for Rogue. But we mentioned this on the desk before Game 1, LeBlanc blue side ban. This has given Legacy a free ban. They've taken away Jace, which was crucial in both victories for these teams. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, they could have potentially swapped the... Jace for the Malzahar as well as probably like Varus or Jin, which seems to be the priority right now. However, they just don't want it to be over in either of the hands uh, of Wizard or Flares. They've both shown that they're pretty confident with it, uh, so they ban it away. So Loss is going to be picking up Jin heading into this game. FBI is not going to have his comfort champion. This has been his most played champion this split so far. Carbon will be picking up Ivan heading into the jungle. That was banned out against him in the second ban rotation when Sim were trying to take away as many champions as possible, and that allows FBI to pick up Varus heading into the bot lane. Yeah, so both solo lanes left wide open this time around for the Sin du uh, duo of Flares and Wizard, and uh, pretty similar on the side of Legacy. Yep, so bottom lane's picked up for Sin and Legacy, as well as the junglers, so we should see top lane and mid lane champions being banned out, as the final pick for Legacy is going to be Cupcake's Misfortune to go up against the Malzahar. Fiora banned out Kennen, the second ban targeted towards Tally. And you have to say that this feels better. I feel like this pick ban phase is actually more in Legacy's wheelhouse. They've got a lot of control, long range engage coming out of the fact that Lost is gonna be on that chin. You know, they have the poke this time around. So we'll see whether that does lead them to pick much more standard in their duo, uh, in their solo lanes. And uh, Carbon's pretty animated right now. He's just having a good chat about something. <laughs> Telling a good yarn, uh, but yeah, and we'll see how this works out uh, as far as the solo ladders go. Well, we have Sindra being banned out here by Sim. They don't want Claire to pick up that champion. Rumble. It's going to be the final ban from Legacy. They don't want Flares on this flame-spitting demon under the top lane. I uh, could potentially see Tally pick up Maokai for another game. 
did not have a fun time against the Rumble top side, but he's going to be picking up Poppy as their top lane pick of choice. Yeah, so priority being put back onto the Poppy. I expect that means that Flares goes towards the Mount Kai himself. Need a super tank up there. I'm expecting big control out of Wizard in the mid lane. Nothing strange. I wouldn't actually be surprised if he went towards something like an Orianna. Uh, because that gives them a great team fighting comp. And you've seen that this game has kind of been won or lost on the fact that team fighting uh, needs to be important. Mm -hmm. But no, it's going to be Malzahar heading into the mid lane for Wizard. We have Rogue, Lucky, and Thresh. And, and you can see Carbon Big Smiles. I was not expecting that. I mean, Carbon's reaction was better. He was like, whoa, that's a, that's a spicy meatball coming in there. Uh, Hello. But yeah, the Thresh being picked up. I mean, I don't think it actually does all that well into Misfortune from personal experience. Uh, however, we'll see whether Rogue can make it work because he is a very good Thresh player. Well, now Legacy taking their time to decide what their mid lane champion of choice is going to be. They go with Orianna for Claire. Pocket pick of his. Misfortune and Jin in the bottom lane still very strong because the Make It Rain can synergize well with Captive Audience. But still, Rogue picking up Thresh. He was a champion that's been banned out against him in this series. A pick he was known for last split in the OPL. Ah, he's still known for it. I mean, he's a very good mechanical uh, player. I actually walked past him in the hallway and he just looked at me and gave me a little bit of a <laughs> uh, I think that he felt that last game playing with FBI. Of course, FBI young guy on your screen right now. Uh, Rogue does need to lead that lane a little bit more. Uh, of course, see whether he's able to do that now he's playing like a very heavy playmaking champion. I mean, these two teams, very down to earth, very nice guys. I mean, they were sitting up in the uh, break room together early before their match, joking around. Good old Minky Whale had no idea they were actually playing each other. <laughs> Mickey Whale turned to Jibs and said, who are you guys playing today? And Jibs was like, are you trolling me? Yeah, you can kind of tell why uh, he's still being <laughs> Voda's most favorite player right now uh, by, a large, uh, by a large number of votes in social media. Not my vote. <laughs> you lost me a game last night, uh, Arn. That's not, uh, that's not on. I'm not happy with him at the moment. <laughs> but still, these two teams, I mean, they've gone all the way. Down to three games here. And Jay, uh, Jace has been taken away, so we're not going to see that pick, which influenced both games quite heavily. Now it's been two different team comps coming out from the two sides. And I think that this has really devolved into team fight now. I mean, we're going to see a lot of control come out of these two mid laners. Mm -hmm. Both of them historically were Rylai's users, have good influence over those team fights. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this happens. I mean, I'm expecting big 5v5 pile in team fights. And right now, when you have a look at that, it's going to come down to the wire because honestly, very two well balanced comps. It certainly is. And we have some unorthodox picks as well. I mean, Nalzahar has been back in competitive play, but when mainly as a support. Yep. Now it's in the mid lane for Wizard. There's a lot of funky things going on as we head on to Summoner's Rift. But before we get into the action, let's check in with Hingers, who's with Sin's coach, Bensel. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Bensel. And I want to start by talking to you about the LeBlanc band. Uh, talk us through the strategy behind that. Um, well, we really don't want to play against it. Uh, <laughs> we haven't practiced it much. I don't think anyone really has. Yep. But the risk of letting it through, as we've seen a couple of times, is just devastating. Even, even more than you don't want to play against Jace. Yes. <laughs> um, so what was your team talk after that uh, second game loss? Oh, the boys are just really excited after that game, I think. I mean, like, even though we lost, it, I think blue side is really favoured on this patch. Mm. Um, so taking them to 50 minutes on red side is really encouraging for us. And I think another, you know, under 30 minute win on blue side is very foreseeable. All right. Well, uh, best of luck in the game and thank you for speaking to us. Thanks. No problem. Spencer, they're very comfortable and very happy with his team's performance so far. It's a, it's a possible chance for a complete stomp of the blue side once again. Let's see if Juice can get that ball rolling for Sin. Flares is going to be on a tank top laner this time around. But he's going to be helping out with the Maokai again, giving Wizard a nice start in this mid lane. Or is it going to be Wizard? Potentially actually just be Varus who picks up the early minions <laughs> from the Maokai saplings. I wouldn't be surprised because, I mean, they've already gone with something that's a little bit unfamiliar with a Thresh support. If they're able to give these over... FBI, Ooh. as he's able to... See, this is why Ooh. they gave them to FBI, because he actually gets it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if they're able to do that, I mean, this influences how bottom lane is going to go heavily. I mean, they can walk forward much earlier, try and pressure up onto this M MF Jin lane, and uh, maybe see if we can get some early action down there. Yeah, he's already hit half of halfway towards level 2 just from the small Raptors alone. Gives him a nice uh, gold boost as well. Enough to pick up a potion later on if he needs it. He's up in the top lane. Talion Flares just uh, trading back and forth, but they're two big tanks. Not going to see too much happen. Although Tally's so far up in CS, just joking, like, obviously uh, not really that big of a deal. Hello, so Carbon. Carbon just chilling out over there. Let's see, Wolf's over towards Red Buff. 
has a little bit of a talk with the Bramble back, you know, frees him from the jungle, and then just continues on his way. Yeah, must have actually been waiting for a little bit of mana there uh, to be able to start <laughs> that one up. You can see that he was quite low. Looks like he already planted a couple of seeds down uh, on the other side of the map, so he'll go back, pick those up. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if we have any further creative passing out of the Legacy Jungler, because uh, he generally goes for very greedy routes, if I am to say so myself, on uh, the Ivan. Well, and I like to see it, because that's when you get big advantages. Well, he's already uh, started quite a bit here. So finds Juice, decides he wants to fight this Elise. Does have Oriana wrapping around. Claire's ghosted for this. Rappel's going to come out, gets it back to safety. Lots of damage back down on towards the Elise. Now Wizard looking to try and get the fight in return on towards Claire. Just both mid laners burning Ghost, though. Carbon does have priority in farming up the Scuttle Crab now. But that is the first time I've ever seen... Oh, bit of a tango in top lane. They're just going to duke it out here. Tally tries to trade back. Does get a nice shield. Grass and dying. Help him out quite a bit. But Flares goes in. Flash away from Tally and Arcane. Smash goes wide. That's a little bit of a mistake out of Flares. I mean, what you're supposed to do is wait for the Q cooldown. Flash and Q at the same time. So it's very hard to flash away in response. Instead went for a cheeky auto attack on top of it. And was not able to pick it up. Will mean that Flashes are traded. However, Tally should just be able to sustain back up underneath that turret. We're not expecting fireworks out of the top lane, but it certainly is an area that, I mean, if it gets snowballing, can go heavily in favor of one of the tanks. Certainly is. Flares will use that time to go back to base. We just checked in with the bottom lane, which is going in favor of FBI heavily. 15 CS up. The reason for that is that the duo lane actually left to go upriver from Legacy. I mean, when Carbon calls, you leave. That's just the way that the Legacy works. I um, mean, you can see it costs them a little bit of a wave that they're picking up underneath the turret. Uh, 14 CS at the moment, but uh, we'll see where the loss is able to bounce back at that. They're going to flash off forward, gets a fight into a cocoon! Big synergy coming out from Sid as Rogue can't land the hook onto Cupcake, but gets a fight anyway. What a big play! Yeah, great play out of Rogue. I mean, this is why the guy is harped as one of the best Thresh players on the server. Uh, a little bit off meta at the moment, but able to get the perfect angle on that play to make sure it set it up for the cocoon, and really no response was able to come out of loss there. He was dead before he hit the ground. And immediately Sim putting themselves on the scoreboard. Cupcake is in trouble. Juice has wrapped around. Teleport's coming through, but is it going to be enough? Tanking turret, repels out. Can he get out in time? Tally's coming through, but no flash for this. Poppy means Juice gets back to safety. Again, this jungler just takes charge of his team. Yeah, and this is horrible news because all of a sudden, I mean, Lost is heading towards the top lane to try and grab a wave. Tally's down bottom. It's only five minutes into the game, a forced lane swap pretty much coming out, and uh, that means that Flair's just going to be able to eat even more creeps. My goodness, Sin again off to a flying start. The early game's been phenomenal so far. Juice has been so aggressive and unpredictable almost, making sure he gangs a different lane every single game. Well, he's got first blood in three different lanes. I mean, he got it for Wizard game one, he got it up top for Flair's game two, and now he's taken it down bottom and uh, given some of his services over to oh. FBI. We had a pretty good uh, game two, you have to say, after not a really loud game one in their victory. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh -oh. here as well as... Uh, oh. being fought here though, throws out the lantern, but he's now just flashed into an unknown territory, finds a spider, and he falls down. Yep, certainly does. So Juve's going to be able to punish the Ivan, who went in for a punish of his own. Uh, what I was trying to say is, we've already got a tier and a Dirk picked up on FBI at this stage of the game. You can see that he's against a couple of long swords on the other side of the map, so uh, definitely in a favorable position as of right now. Uh, that was Rogue's fault. I want everyone to know that. <laughs> when you A-click towards a creep like that and your support takes it, it automatically makes you hit the creep next to it. Uh, you know, I don't often blame supports for something, but that was Rogue's fault. Well, Lost does need to pick up as much CS as possible. He's 20 behind FBI at the moment. Sin matched the swap that comes out from Legacy, but it seems like Legacy don't want this two on two because they've immediately put Cupcake and Lost back down into the bottom lane. Which gives Sin some time to get damage on the top lane out of turret. But one more time, this looks like the tempo is all in Sin's favor. I mean, they're already on the turret. They're already pushing the second wave into it. Rogue wants to recall and actually see if he can help bottom lane. Everyone, though, from Legacy is collapsing into that bottom lane. Flares needs to be a bit careful. I mean, he's still a Maokai. I feel like ten, uh, diving a full HP Maokai is still dangerous, whoever you are. Certainly is. Karma takes quite a bit of damage. They will lock down Flares, and they get lots of damage out. Ultimate comes out too. He pops his own, heals up with his passive, but Tally's going to fall as well. 
Wizards there to pick up a return kill, and Legacy get absolutely nothing out of that. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, they get a kill, but I, as I said, I just feel like that's a really unnecessary, risky play. Uh, able to get the Twisted Advance out, and it was at the last moment. I mean, he probably could have gone earlier to mitigate even for, uh, more damage. And just heals Ooh. up so much from the grass as well as that sap magic. So they're going to give up first structure here. It's going to be about a 3,000 gold lead actually for Sin, and uh, that's big at the start of the game. And I mean, we talked about last game how FBI was behind and Sin did everything they can to make sure he was helped out, gave him a kill, gave him another kill, gave him all the turret gold. Now he's 1,400 gold ahead. Pretty much. So FBI has got the ball rolling on this Varus. We've seen what uh, Loss can do when he gets ahead on Varus. Now I'm excited to see if FBI can mimic the exact same trend. Uh, top lane doesn't bounce there for Sims, so Tally's going to be able to pick up some free farm for himself, but it's fairly even between the top laners at the moment. In fact, uh, Dark Seal being picked up by the Maokai. And again, Sin are looking to take down an Infernal Dragon as the first dragon of the game. Legacy look like they want to try and contest for this, but nowhere close to stop it. Yeah, they can't. And I mean, this is probably why they didn't care if top lane bounced or not, because at the same time, there's no punish that's coming out from Tally. He's just getting some farm. Uh, and Maokai is just absorbing mid lane as Wizard went down, and now they're just going to rotate the uh, map back towards the top end. So no harm, no foul really at this stage of the game. In fact, there's more than five creeps in favor right now uh, for Tally. So Flares is up in CS for all extents and purposes. And uh, this is becoming a really rough early game for Legacy. They need to put on the hard turtle shell again. See if they can get another favorable team fight. So it seems like it. A sin now pushed down towards the bottom lane, out of turret. Lost takes a piercing arrow to the knee. He gets chucked down to about half health. As sin will take down their second structure of the game, just through brute force alone. Daisy's been called up. Juice is here to try and stop that one. He continues to poke out towards Lost. Carmen actually looking for a fight. He's gonna get locked back here. FBI gets the damage down. Ivan's gonna go timber as he falls. The first kill picked up already by Sin. Flares threatens with a teleport, but cancels it in the top lane. So does Tally. Yeah, exactly right. All of a sudden, Claire's heading down to another member in that bottom lane, but that just means that mid lane is completely uncontested right now. Oh. oh, that is just so much damage for this stage of the game. And Lost can't defend. I mean, that's going to be a second turret that falls. Legacy just looked outclassed here almost by Sin in the early game in all three games of this best of three series. Benzel was very confident that this is going to be a quick game for them on blue side, and it seems like it's already starting up and ramping up for Sin to kick things off. Turret falls, two turrets to none, five kills to one, and a 3,500 gold lead. And that's not all, because Flair's found. Claire locked down by Wizard, though. Foley is going num, 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 as they try to take him down, but does get the flash over the wall. Carbon now trying to run away from the Malefic Visions. Spice away, Rebuff for a Ooh. bit of health there. Flash forward for Wizards, not going to be enough as Claire lives, but Legacy almost lose two more members. Yeah, exactly right, and we'll see whether that forces them off mid lane. You saw that Wizard very aggressive there using both summoner spells forward wanted to pick up that double kill that's what they need a snowballing Melzahar would certainly set this game over the edge oh, but the continued pressure has just been unrelenting so far out of Sin now Sin putting their Howling Abyss practice to the test here Tally will knock away FBI to start things off as Rogue looks for a death sentence doesn't land Legacy now just desperately oh. trying to defend the outer turret. That's just dirty. That should be illegal there because yeah. Lost needs to go back to base now. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, we're only 11 minutes into this match and it's tier Yomus as well as CDR boots. I mean, Ooh. FBI is just a monster at this stage of the game at 1, 0, and 3. And he's picked up two turret kills to his name as well. If you're just wondering where all that gold is coming from. And the poke, unrelenting, going to be able to continue here. You see that Rogue is like, come back mid lane. And Juice is like, ah, still some creeps to be able to farm up. FBI nearly gets caught, Fish. Yeah, pops the ultimate there. Claire used his shockwave too. That's the ultimate trade in the mid lane. FBI will use that time to head back to base. Legacy did successfully repel Sin from taking down the mid lane outer turret. Juice waiting in the wings, does a bit of counter jungling. That forces Claire to clear out the wolf camps. And no bottom side of the jungle for Ivan, which means Carbon's going to be happy feeding for quite some time here with no jungle camps to take. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, he is level 7. He's still pretty much ahead of the clock. He's also picked himself up a nice spell thief just for some gold generation. Now they can come in. Some nice mana regen as well. Don't mind the pick up at all. And see what the big lanky forester is able to get done because there's nothing really available on the map right now which traps Legacy under their turrets and means that they're just open to all of this poke. 
Sticky Eye and Rogue are going to continue dishing out the poke there. You can see Mega Rain coming out from Cupcake. Just trying to get a little bit of gold for himself. He's watching one of the fastest skull generating supports thanks to that ability. Uh, but doesn't use it on the wave, so Claire's going to be forced to clear this one out. That should be fine for now. I mean, it does have decent wave clear. Never use it on the wave here. It makes last hitting obnoxiously hard. Uh, I've, I've been told. Yep, until <laughs> you, your AD carry can clear out the wave, just make it rain on the champions. Another one comes out. Followed up by Lost this time. Saw that he hits it because he gets a little bit of speed. FBI still threatening there. Ooh. Claire luckily gets the shield off there. You can see immediately as soon as he pulls back the drawstring, everybody from the side of Legacy gets the heck out of there. But Ivan's not going to like that one too much either. Now Blue, uh, sorry, the Tear definitely helping him out. But Juice repels just in time. Daisy gets caught up. Big hook coming out from Rogue on towards Claire, but gets a big shield from Ivan. Sally forced to cancel his teleport, and Siv will, Sim Juice uh, will just smite away Daisy. Carmen's not too happy about that one. But they get the teleport out of Tally for no response out of Sin. Gonna call. Ultimate. Claire gonna take quite a bit of damage. Flares soaks up most of that one. Dark Passage is there for him to get back to safety, but he's charged on by Tally. Now, pops the ultimate. Port time comes out from Cupcake. Gets the first kill. Tally's been knocked back. They're trying to return the favor. FBI looking for it, but the arrow doesn't connect. Legacy get a pick for themselves, but they're blinking health bars everywhere here. I mean, that was a 3v5. That was Flares, FBI, and Rogue in the mid lane, and Juves Oops. and Wizard are just down the other side of the map. You can see that uh, Tally definitely needs to go back to base now. Ooh. And uh, that's nearly going to be another turret taken out because Wizard was just in oh, here. Juves has gone in. He goes on a rampage. We'll get slammed to the wall by Tally. Did look like FBI wanted to return another kill for himself, but they just trade one for one. Most importantly, Juice gets a kill, and it's only Cupcake that picks up the return. I mean, still, I feel like that's just a little bit unnecessary. You're already so far ahead in this game. Just allow this pressure to continue. You've got a Dragon to collapse back into in 10 seconds. I mean, you've nearly taken another turret for yourself over the other side of the map, and yet they're taking so much damage. I mean, Cupcake's a monster. He's just destroying people at the moment. Something is. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Wizard chips down the bottom lane in a turret. A couple more auto attacks would have been enough to take that down. So, good siege from Sin. They do eventually concede a pick to Legacy. They do have ample position to try and take down this Ocean Dragon. They actually conceded two, and I just want to keep track of that, because really, uh, right now, Sin is in the driver's seat, 3,000 gold. But let's go back to what Nero was saying. When you play this style, fast-paced League of Legends, prone to errors. So, I think, like, the first kill, you know, onto flares, definitely was an overcommit, didn't need to be that far up, got taken out. And then the second time around, Juve's actually turret dove to be able to uh, give away his life. I mean, he gave up a four kill spree. Uh, so that's a couple of unforced errors really out of sin. And I uh, just want to say, you know, they look to be the better squad today. I mean, we'll see whether Legacy is able to hit back, but I think so far it's really fair to say that Sin has had majority of control in this series. And, uh, they can't afford many more mistakes. They certainly can't. Let's see if they're going to be able to play clean on League of Legends from this stage. FBI's gone and picked up a blue buff for himself. Here comes a curtain call. Hops to Yomus, can't dodge the second one. Has to flash away. Bullet time comes out. Daisy gets popped as well. Lockdown coming out from FBI as he dodges the captive audience. Now Flares on top of the lane keepers. He's clicking on Timber as he gets taken down first. Rose flash in amongst her. Death set is not going to connect, but FBI gets the double kill off of the engage coming out from Legacy. Even the flash from Lost being burned. Yeah, that's much better play out of Sin. I mean, FBI. FBI burns everything, kites back, gets beneath his turret, good teleport comes in, and they get the re-engage and are able to pick up two kills for absolutely nothing. Really nice, smart play, and it looks like this may actually reward them with the mid lane turret as well, if not more, as Wizards looking for a flank. I mean, they've got foilings, they've got spiderlings as well. There's just so much for Sin to do around these turrets, and that's going to get taken down with these. All other turrets have fallen for Sin, none for Legacy so far, and they're 5,000 gold up just 16 minutes in. Sin are looking to try and upset the current leaders of the OPL. Yeah, they certainly are. And I mean, when you have a look at it, they've got two dragons to boot. They really have controlled this map. And Ooh. none of the turrets have really been under siege. Now for. Rogue streaming in here. Pulls in Wizard. Flares is looking to try. Wrap around. Gets on top of Claire. Good damage and good lockdown from Wizard as FBI goes on a rampage. Rogue flies on back in. Tally is trying to do everything he possibly can. But the piercing arrows are too much as two of the members of Legacy take it to the knee and fall down. And this is what they were talking about. Their game plan is don't play scared. Make sure if there is a play available, you commit everything and you go for it. Flares flashing over the wall. Wizard gets in there straight away means that Claire can't get his ultimate off. 
A little bit of trouble here for Flares, although he's nice and tanky. Duck. And continuing to siege down this mid lane. Dark Passage just getting back to safety. Cocoon still coming up. Cupcake trying to do everything he can to push Sin away, but he's just a little support here. It's not going to be enough as they do chip away at the inner turret. Again, Wizard streaming down towards the bottom lane. He might be able to pick up a turret sneakily here for Sin. There are members of Legacy trying to collapse. The Boilings are doing the best they can to push this one out. I mean, this is going to be a hard turret to break. You've got Noriana there and the rest of the team is just around the corner. Although one auto attack should do it. No, not going to stick around for it. So they do remain in control of all their outer still Legacy, but 6,000 gold now is Ooh. the lead. And when you have a look at the win conditions that's going to come out, I mean, there's just so much lockdown, so much CC available on Sin, that when it comes to these ARAM fights, uh, really is difficult to get on top of them. I mean, Malzahar is a support, greater locking down champions. Malzahar is a mid laner. He's probably going to kill whoever is locked down in an ultimate if it's not going to get disrupted. Uh, Tally tried valiantly to save Claire there, but the spell shield that comes out of Malzahar kept him alive for just way too long. Legacy now desperately looking to try and find an avenue to fight back. Baron comes up in a minute 30. We'll have to see if Sin are able to contest for this one. For now, though, they're content with trying to take blue buff for themselves. FBI should pick this one up again. He's got his Edge of the Night to go with the Yomi's Ghost Blade and Tear. So it's a very stacked up Varus, kind of emulating what the Jace did for both the squads earlier. Very similar to how Lost played uh, his first game as well. And the Siege is just unrelenting. I mean, Captain, uh, Ultimate's going to come out. FBI takes a couple of shots. Yep. We'll be able to get back to safety. Wizard was locked down as well. Sin very patient here. Death Centers does not connect. And meanwhile, in the top lane, I mean, Flares is just up there Ooh. looking to take the turret all by him lonesome. What's a big treat to do? That was an engage from Legacy, and they are forced to redemption to heal themselves back up. Sin now already on towards the inner turret. They take it out with ease thanks to the prep done by Wizard earlier. And Flares is just smacking away at these turrets with this big Maokai arm. Exactly right. So all of a sudden, now they have another weak point on the map. I mean, very nice split out of Legacy. They didn't. Uh, out of Sin, sorry. They didn't have Teleport available, but they were able to keep it together for long enough. Flair's been caught, though, Fish. Gonna get locked down here by the ultimate. They're still trying to chase on towards him. Does have his own ultimate available to reduce all the damage coming out from the Ivan and the Orianna. Lives to tell the tale. Yeah, so Shockwave burnt there and no kill picked up, and you feel like that's important. One of the big teamfight ultimates. Instead, Cupcake just clears out the wave again with the misfortune on. You feel like that's really all it's been relegated to after, uh, you know, the first 10 minutes of the game. Every MF ult I've seen has just been it away. Certainly has been as Sin continue to see this mid lane. I mean, Legacy said they practice on Howling Abyss, but they're just getting out poked here. It seems like they can't quite handle Sin taking down these turrets one by one. Maokai saplings to get vision inside of the brush as well. That turret's gonna fall. Death Sentence comes out. Tally's been locked down. Kupke looking for the engage. Can't quite find it. They've lost their front line. Carver just watches and he get locked down as well. One more attack's gonna be enough. He's forced to fight. Big hook coming up from Rogue. Claire's gonna get smacked away by Wizard as the Null Sphere comes out to lock him down with that silence. Sin, we're on to the inhibitor turrets. And they are just not hesitating. Flash forward from Rogue, able to lock down another member. And Sin really have shown up to play today. They're 9,000 gold up at only 21 minutes in and looking to break the base again. Juves has to get a heal coming up from FBI to stay alive. Critical, loss, fights Juves. Onto Flares now, takes a bit of damage, forced to flash away. Dave, he's being given the high five. And they're just gonna try and chase on down towards the main members of Sin. Slow, coming out from the FBI. One auto attack from Daisy, looking for these knockups. One more is enough, gets on the flares, flank from Tally, locks the Maokai down, doesn't get the stun against the wall. This redemption's not gonna be enough to pick up the Maokai. Wizard still looking to slow down Tally, making sure he can't quite get there. Hook coming out from Rogue, gonna try and stop them too, as FBI keeps them at bay, and Sin kiting back phenomenally so far. And what a performance out of the young man, FBI, able to get so much damage in here. I mean, Rogue sets up a lot of this with a great fresh hook, and then they just continue, I mean, Carbon gets chunked out, flash forward, nails Claire, gets a good play back. That's just really clean, fresh play, but FBI 604, he's up 55 CS. I mean, Lost and Cupcake are one of those lanes that everyone in the OPL has said that they don't want to run into, but they're very good. I mean, they got a lot of focus this game, but as I said, uh, he's turned everything uh, they've given him into uh, something a little bit better. So. Impressed with Sin's 
80 carries so far. Uh, and I hope to see it just continue to grow because this has been a guy that everyone knew around <laughs> for so long. We talked about it. He was a PC bomb player, very, very young, only just come of age and uh, is looking at the goods. Certainly is. Sin adapting very well with FBI. And this series has been really interesting because Sin, no one three runs at all. Completely gone towards team fights and has been looking good so far. Fighting well. Uh, Jew's going to be able to steal red buff away from Legacy. As now they set their eyes towards the Howling Abyss off top lane. And I mean, Claire just keeps getting chunked out. It's been another shaky game for the mid laner. Uh -oh. Jubes. That's working out for Cupcake. Redemption's going to <laughs> heal self wizard. Jubes doesn't repel down in time. Uh, the Spiderlings and the Boilings, they're more than enough to get the tanking of the turrets going. And take down another inner turret. Flares has red buff, and he's slowly slapping away at this bottom lane inhibitor turret spawn. Yeah, he certainly is. I mean, once again, I don't really know if it's all that slow. Red buff does accelerate the process, so that one's going to go down a little bit. As ultimate opens up again, Juve's in some trouble. Forced to flash away, gets away from the bullets thrown out by Lost. Wizard tanks up the last one. Ooh. And, ooh, FBI was looking for the re-engage on towards Cupcake, but uh, Flares has got the turret spawn. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, as I said, it's not really all that slow. That's a couple of minion waves. They're able to pick that one up. Ooh. FBI almost gets locked down, but good arrows coming out from the Svaris. And Flares is just completely ignoring, uh, ignoring Tally now. Yep. I mean, just hitting the turret around him. Oh, that's not a pretty sight to watch. Shockwave Claire miss. Whiffs the shockwave. And that's a big zoning potential zoning tool coming out from Legacy. That's gone. Oh. Redemption heals up Legacy after all the poke coming out from FBI. And they're still chunking away at this turret. Meowkai might actually get a solo kill in the bottom lane. He's going on top of Poppy. Look at that. He's trying to fight him. Flares is looking for it. Meanwhile, Sin are taking the top lane inhibitor turret. They forced three members down into the bottom lane. Claire's been locked down. That's a dead Oriana. Sin have broken the base again. And just time and time again, this pressure is unrelenting. A 4-1 split just because of how tanky the Maokai is at this stage of the game. Had the rev buff and Tally couldn't go with him. Means Claire has to overextend to try and save the turret. And three inhibs are down at 24 minutes, Fish. You can see big smiles on Flair's face there. <laughs> he almost solo killed Tally in a tank or tank match. 24 minutes in. That never happens. Yeah, it certainly doesn't. I mean, do they go towards the Baron? I think that you get a shop in here, guys, because it's a little bit unnecessary to go towards. Uh -oh. Carbon going to face check. Being chased down, FBI flashes with the ultimate. Forces the flash out of Carbon. Not oh. going to have that available. One more time, I mean, flashing Ooh. an AD carry for the jungle. Eh, not really all that worth. I mean, they are 11,000 gold up. Who really cares at this stage of the game? Uh -huh. Probably just going to look in towards that Baron as Juice eats some honey fruit for himself. Yeah, Foilings and Spiderlings are going to try and tank up as much of this Baron as possible. They found Carbon. No flash available for the Ivan, but only Rogue and Wizard over the wall. Bullet time. Comes out from Cupcake, gets good damage down. Wizard low, gonna get taken down first. Cupcake gets that kill. Rogue Nally gets away. Baron will be able to go over towards Sin as Jews gets the smite. Claire tried to shockwave him out of it. But Sin, do get the clean Baron attempt there. I mean, he just hasn't got enough AP. Generally, if you're an Ariana, a shockwave into the dissonance combo does a little bit more than ju the jungler spite. But you know, at this stage of the game, he's only level 12, not that level 16 that he would have hoped for. Oof. And uh, he's one, four, and three. Definitely does not have the items he needs. And these super minions are just smacking away at this turret. Two super minions in each wave, thanks to all the inhibitors being down. They've already lost one Nexus turret. Legacy have found him in a desperate spot here. 13 to five in kills, no turrets picked up by Legacy, and now 11,000 gold behind Sin. Sin yeah. want to close out this game. 5,000 of that gold is on the 80 carries. I mean, right now, FBI is just a rich, rich man. And uh, it doesn't even look like they need the Baron buff in here because honestly, those uh, super creeps are doing the jobs themselves. Pretty much, Legacy can't quite handle it. That turret is an auto attack away from dying. Legacy need to fight. If they don't fight now, their base is going to be in shambles shortly. But Sin, very patient. Rogue able to pull back flares as he slowly chips away at this turret. It's going to fall. Lost. Takes an arrow to the knee. Incredibly low. Here they go on top of Ivan. Knocks him out of redemption. He's going to fall like timber. One by one, Legacy are going to go down. Big combo coming out of Cupcake and Claire, but it doesn't matter because the Nexus is open. Sin happy to able to do it. They're cheering and screaming because they've taken down the Giants of the OPL. Legacy will fall. Sin take the series 2-1. And what an impressive performance out of Sin. You can see that they're all smiles. They thought that they'd given a bad performance week one when they just scrapped through against Abyss, a worse performance week two against Avant. But now they've done it. They've been able to pick up the all-important 2-1 over Legacy. 
uh, who, you know, have to scratch their head a little bit. They definitely didn't play their best brand of League of Legends, but all credit to Sin, they look like they just had the tempo advantage. They certainly did. Every single match they came into today, all three games, early tempo set up by Juice, making sure he targeted a single lane, put that lane ahead. Legacy did fight back in game two, but still, even then, it looked like struggle street for them because Sin almost took that one as well. I mean, in game two, they were able to go top with the Rek'Sai uh, Rumble. They were able to target out Tally on the tank, and they were able to, you know, try and swing that match up. That was just one bad team fight a little bit too early around the Dragon Pit. But apart from that, they played pretty good team fighting League of Legends. I mean, it's never going to be pretty. When your goal is to have 10 members on the screen every single time and just duke it out, it can look a little bit sloppy, mm -hmm. but at every stage, Sin looked like that was the way that they want to play, and they executed on it well. Well, Sin are able to pick up the series 2-1 to, to break down that game further. We're going to throw it back to my OPL Bay, Michael Hing is Hing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fish. Uh, good words. All right, we are back here at the analyst desk, and Sin were able to close out that series 2-1 over Legacy, ending Legacy's undefeated streak. And... Uh, Turns out that Sin Aram is more powerful than we ever could have believed, right, Inera? Yeah, yeah, it actually worked out pretty well for them. I mean, that's what we said at the start. Like, they need to play to what their strength is, and if they do, then they can actually show up really well. Like, it, was, it was a good series for them. Yeah, really Mendrix, we saw the Velkos pick. We saw Jace being priority. I mean, it's just been a, it's been a fascinating series, debuting 7.2. What I love about this in the broad aspect is that Sin said they wanted to evolve, and they really showed us in this game that they can evolve, especially against the leader at the moment, or the top of the ladder leader. So for them to show up and show that, yes, we can do more than 1-3-1 is fantastic. Keep up the A-Rams. <laughs> I mean, uh, for Legacy, though, this is kind of a, a big deal. Like, they, they, they were flying high, they caught this loss. And does this, you know, do you think this shows some weaknesses in Legacy's play? Um, it definitely does show some weaknesses. I also think it might just be an off week for Legacy. Yeah. Uh, like I personally want to apologize to them. I know we were their main script partner for this week. And due to some issues like we had with the internet, we had to cancel like 50% of their scrims. Oh. And I'm sure that probably impacted them. I don't want to take anything away from Sin for that because sure. this was still like really good from Sin. And yeah. I'm really happy for them. But that may have had an impact on it. So it may just be an off week. And I would say like this has only happened once. I probably wouldn't expect it to happen like yeah. too much often in the future. And I wouldn't take too much from it. Maybe you've got to buy, uh, maybe you've got to buy carbon a donut. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh. got to pay him back, <laughs> unfortunately. All right. Well, let's take a look at the draft for game three, which Sin were able to win. We thought saw that Thresh pick, kind of a bit of a pocket pick. We saw Carbon and uh, uh, we, saw, we saw Ivan and Oriana, kind of these uh, comfort picks for Legacy. Uh, but what was interesting about this is that priority Jace pick just became a priority ban now in Era. Yeah. Um, so. Getting rid of Jace, like when they ban LeBlanc on the blue side, mm -hmm. um, it just lets you get a free ban on red side. So getting rid of Jace is pretty important, I think, for them. Because if you know they're going to first pick Jace and you want to deal with it, get rid of it. It was pretty good. And I think it was really smart from Sin as well to actually pick Malzahar as a bait. Because in the first game, Legacy banned out Thresh. Because everyone knows Rogue is a good Thresh player. So by taking Malzahar first, they just completely baited Legacy into leaving it open picked Thresh and then abused it. I think it was actually pretty good from yeah, Sen. It was a pretty draft. smart move. It was, it was fantastic. I mean, because the thing is, you look at it and everyone says, all right, no worries. They're going to be doing the Malzaha support. When you see Malzaha, his fortune, all those things just playing out, we expect him to go there. It was just a fantastic way to go. No, wait, Thresh is still a reality. <laughs> and you guys completely forgot about it. And Rogue showed up that, especially given that first blood, that fla like the flash into Flay was beautiful in that lane. That really set up FBI to have that great match. So it was really well played between them all. Yeah, props to Bensel for some uh, really creative drafting there. Let's take a look at a replay. I want to see this double kill, uh, I think, in the... Yeah. So they, they basically try to jump onto FBI here, and he's able to get out pretty pretty quickly from that point on. And then I believe he ends up being saved here by Flares. There's the teleport coming in, and instantly Sinner able to turn back around. And you saw the amount of damage that FBI was able to put up, and this was because of how well they set him up in the early game. The first blood, getting the early Raptors, also being allowed to free farm in the top lane when Legacy made a bit of a, I guess, questionable move to just decide to move everyone down to that bot lane and. They, Sin were able to defend perfectly. So they were just benefiting around their macro plays perfectly throughout this entire game. Yeah, and I think that play was something really big that Legacy needed to capitalize on. They needed to make sure that they won that fight. And like FBI played that really well. Like He just managed to just spin around everything and just completely <laughs> avoid it and was just safe. And like he carried that fight and basically... I don't know, kind of secured the game being won at that point. I yeah, I mean, really he had that infinite KDA towards the yeah. end of the game. Uh, I think we have a second replay as well, which is a Sin storming the base. We'll be pulling that up on the screen right now. So this is Sin executing on their ARAM sort of move, and they just know they're far ahead. They've got everything going for them. 
FBI is landing hooks left, right, and center. I think he's actually going to jump through here, get the hook onto Claire as well. Basically, they just absolutely storm the base, and it's just them saying, we're strong, we want to create this ARAM, and it seems to be deja vu from game one. They sort of just stormed that base again the mid from beforehand, and then just took the game from there. So really decisive, really excellent moves. In, in era, if you're a casual player watching that this game at home, what's your sort of one takeaway from this where you're like, I need to improve? What's like the thing that you look at and you're like, all right, I should be doing that? Uh, I would say probably playing Thresh. Like yeah. if you're looking at solo queue, <laughs> like Thresh got on that first blood. Yeah. At the end there, you saw in that fight, Thresh was the one who got that fight started at the end, got the Varus and killed him. Like the Thresh is a pretty big part and I know it's great for solo queues. So like if you're seeing a competitive player pop off like Rogue just did there on Thresh, like, I would want to play it personally. Right. I think it's a really good pick. Put your lanterns out. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. it is now time for our Radiant Medal, which is uh, 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 the MVP who we have voted on and it is going to flares today oh it's a tie apparently because oh. it's also going to juice out of wow. nowhere That's i mean not out of nowhere because we all voted but <laughs> <laughs> i think juice earned it yeah, yeah like, both really of those series. players earned it yeah yeah I completely agree with that the juice really did a great job setting the, the tempo and the pace of the game for Sin to sort of get those two wins. And if you look at Flares, he had two solid first games, had a, a, actually an excellent third game as well, really making sure that he was there at the appropriate times to pop off and help out those fights. And also we heard from uh, Carbon early today that Juves was one time the protege of Carbon in era. So uh, I guess the... Uh the student has become the master in many yeah. ways. <laughs> That's what it looked like this game. Juice was really popping off. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, it's now time for us to throw to Spawn for the interview, who's standing by with one of the players. Thanks so much, Ingers. I am Spawn. I am joined by Rogue, of course, the support player coming through from Sin, who just was able to pick up a 2-1 victory. Uh, I want to talk about the Thresh as well. Uh, <laughs> how nice is it to bait a team into uh, that and then pick up first blood and just carry a game? It's, it's so nice being able to go back to the Thresh. Like, I got to play my two favourite champions. I got to play the Volkos and the Thresh. And obviously, you know, our coach Bensel did a really great job with the pick band to get me on that champion. So, baited the MF pick. Thought that we were playing Swart Mouths, but we flexed it. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely nice to say you want to go back to a little bit more of the <coughs> coaching stuff because you guys have been pretty vocal all today that, you know, you had one game plan that's to not play like a bitch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what was that? Is that your shot calling? Is that Juve's? Like, who's coming out and really keeping the team true to that? Oh, uh, I think in the last week's game versus AV, we just mainly played like a bitch. So, in um, scrims this week, it was mainly our goal just to flash in, always flash in, never flash out, you know, always go in. So... Pretty much play like a bitch, and we had a good week of scrims because of it. So we changed our play style up a bit, always flashed in, and that's what we did. Certainly look to come out well. I want to talk about uh, the guy that you land with. I mean, you had a great <laughs> series, but FBI also did. He's a young kid. He's been around forever. Um, I mean, you've played with a plethora of AD carriers now. What's so good about FBI, and why is he so exciting? I mean, FBI's new. He took some time to adapt to the pro scene, which he's done really well. He's really got into team play. But if you look at the challenge lab, the guy's hard stock rank four, which whatever but you can't get that high without being a good player so you know obviously he's mechanically a fucking amazing player <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah he's really good all right cool and i want to talk about sin as a whole uh, obviously you know every single year i hear that you know this is the best sin's ever gonna be you know that we're finally a row this year it actually looks that yeah. it's coming to fruition are you guys a real deal this time around well I think that versus, you know, we under uh, underestimated Abyss a bit. Last week, we just, we had some trouble translating scrims to stage. Like, we always had scrim results since we got to the house. But this week, I think the nerves were gone. I didn't feel nervous. I didn't really feel anyone else was nervous. We were just having fun joking around in the room before the game. So, I think we've really adapted to translating scrims to stage. And that'll carry on throughout the season. Well, I hope it certainly <laughs> does, guys. That is going to be our first series of the game done. Sin did take it 2-1 over Legacy. But don't go anywhere. After the break, we have Avant Guard taking on Abyss. Stick around. Down, coming out from FBI as he dodges the captive audience. Now Flares on top of the lane key beast. He's picking up Timber as he gets taken down first. Rogue's flashing in amongst the Death Center's not going to connect, but FBI gets the double of kill. Comes out. Tally's been locked down. Kupke looking for the engage. Can't quite find it. They've lost their front line. Carmen just watches and he gets locked down as well. One more attack's going to be enough. He's forced to fight. Big hook coming up from Rogue. Claire's going to get smacked away by Wizard. Flares is looking for it. Meanwhile, Sin are taking the top lane inhibitor turret. They've forced three members down into the bottom lane. Claire's been locked down. That's a dead Oriana. 
up, Santa broke the base again. Lost takes an arrow to the knee, incredibly low. Here they go on top of Ivan, knocks him out of redemption. He's gonna fall like timber. One by one, Legacy are gonna go down. Big combo coming out of Club Cake and Claire, but it doesn't matter because the Nexus is open. Sin, happy now to do it. They're cheering and screaming because they've taken down the Giants of the OPL. Legacy will fall. Sin, take the series 2-1.